for Roland Willett's old men's stories, visiting Leon McGregor with a little background noise. Yeah, we're both in there, aren't we? Yeah. A couple old farts. Looks like it. Okay, see the little red lights? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's about all the red light action you're going to get around here. <laughs> all the lights. <laughs> if that's the best we can do. Yeah, that's it. You ever do a real younger lady? Oh, oh boy. Yes. Got to keep up. 16 years younger than I am. Whoa. Best thing that's ever happened to me. That's pretty nice. She's a wonderful, wonderful lady. I missed you. Leon McGregor. That's Scottish? Yeah. When I'm with the uh, Irishman, it's Scotch. And when I'm with the Scotch, it's Irish. <laughs> Leon McGregor. <laughs> hey, Leon McGregor is with me. That's just where we're going to start. And uh, he's a Irish Scotsman, depending on who he's talking to. <laughs> right. Kind of a kind of a mongrel, a Duke's mixture, but a that's Duke's what this is. And were you born in North Dakota? Right. Born in a, out on a sheep ranch in Sioux County, North Dakota. Sioux County, and that's by Bismarck. Right? South of Bismarck, right uh, on the state line between the Dakotas and North oh, South okay. Dakota. Line. Okay. Yeah, that is in the middle of nowhere. That's that's a place you drive by. It's the west west of the river. It's the the cowboy country, the livestock. Uh, my dad had a. Uh, it wasn't the biggest ranch in the country by no means, but with the least land and the Indian land, it's on the Standing Rock Reservation and had about ten thousand acres and we run a couple hundred head of cattle and twelve hundred sheep. Wow, that's a lot of land for a little cattle, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it, it's not you very needed, high producing needed, land. Yeah, you needed you needed that much land to get that much right. to get that few, few get cattle. I live in Wisconsin now, and I was in the livestock business out there. And out there, they figure uh, uh, cow per unit or cows per acre. Right. Back there, they figure acres per cow. Cow. Yeah. It's a <laughs> considerable difference. Yeah, not much water there. No, well, the water isn't the problem. It's, uh, well, you know, there's uh, well water and we build dams and everything, but the, the annual rainfall isn't much. Yeah, yeah. Best grass in the country, though, if you can get it to grow, it's high protein, it's good for livestock, but it's tough to make a living out there. Yeah. Elements working against you. Was that in the peasant country? Yeah. Cool. It wasn't what they call, it's, uh, you get east of the river, around Mitchell, South Dakota, and in there they call the pheasant capital of the world, but uh, okay. we had plenty of pheasant. Oh, wow. Uh, Did you, you also had uh, antelope, right? Oh, yeah. Deer, antelope. Yeah. We had right. two kinds of deer. We had white tail and mule deer. Yeah, it's a mule deer country, isn't right. it? Yeah. And uh, it was just west of the, I was raised 30 miles west of the Missouri River, and uh, Back before they built the Owani Reservoir, well, and flooded all that ground. Well, there was a lot of mule deer down next to the river, and then the white tail were out on the prairie. Oh, okay. So you always had you always had meat on the table. Oh, always playing plenty of venison. And you also you outside your own cattle, and you'd have accidents. Yes. And that be you. Yep. We, when I was a kid, we raised everything we eat. The only time we ever bought anything from the store was flour or sugar. Was raised right there. That's right, that's right. Yeah. Yep, I got family up in northern Minnesota. They were pretty close to that. Wow. And uh, and you did you did like most farmers do, you went somewhere else after a while because it was really tough. People say, Oh, we want outdoor and wilderness and roughing and that's in nature and that's what we should do. And these people sit in the city and I laugh at them. I said, I, I don't know a city, I don't know a farmer whose wife at least didn't want to live in town oh, and well, go to have the store right next to her. It's a lifestyle all of its own and it kind of gets in your blood. It does. Go away. Um, I. Uh, Especially in the spring of the year, I still long for the prairies. You know, when uh, lambs are being born and the, and the colts and the calves and everything is green, the flowers are coming and, and uh, 
the meadowlarks are singing. It's a wonderful, wonderful place to be. So I have gone back there at that time. And then you get a wet snow during calving and you're out there uh, 20 hours a day trying to save the baby calves. And, uh, and I'm there for two or three days and I wonder what the hell was I lonesome for. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a great life. Uh, I am glad that I had the opportunity to be raised out there in the cowboy country. And what kind of horses did you ride? Well, back then it, we rode good horses. You know, we didn't uh, go so much by breed or color or anything. Later on in life I got into uh, raising quarter horses. Oh, okay. And uh, my wife and I uh, uh, raised some really good horses and we bred for confirmation and disposition. Didn't worry about colors and just nice quiet. Uh, this was back in Wisconsin where there's a lot of pleasure horses. Right. But out there in Dakotas and my dad was quite a horseman and he passed it on to I've got three, had three brothers and uh, two of them are gone now but we were all horsemen and he taught us how we broke a lot of horses, trained a lot of horses. Right. It was using horses then, something that you could get out on the prairie and actually do something with. Yep. And you picked them for, for, for all the purposes of, of going out and handling, right. and handling cattle. Handling cattle. We lambed out on the range. And, uh, that takes some good horses to work on the land of the road. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yep. We had some. And then we fed in the wintertime with teams. We kept uh, three teams of workhorses, six head of workhorses, but weren't all winter. And those, yeah, well, the workhorses were different from the, from the range of them. Right. They're usually bigger than the workhorses. We did everything by hand. There wasn't no, you know, pitched it on, hay on, and pitched it off. And I wore out about six pitchforks in my life. Wow. And one good old man. <laughs> yeah, I, I, did, uh, I did enough to sample, you know, with a pitchfork. I didn't, I just did it because I was a city boy that went out and spent a summer on the farm. And uh, we're going to cut it for just a second. Okay, we're back on and... <laughs> <laughs> You didn't see the cup, but we had a we had we had a wonderful we interviewed a FedEx person. Oh yeah, yeah. Didn't we interview him? Didn't we? Yeah, we did. Yeah. So, and and right now we were just on the range and talking about horses. Right. Usually I don't remember what we do, but I like horses. Horses, horses are cool. Huh? Well, of all the things I've ever done in my life, which has been many, to raise a family and everything that. I always reverted back to agriculture in some way, livestock. That's, I think that has been, uh, that's something that you were raised with that you never get rid of. I don't think, I've always been, revert back to, you know, I'd have a job, be out of the livestock business, and I'll play the music or whatever, and then uh, next thing you know, when I got someplace, uh, if it was possible, I'd end up with a few head of livestock, a couple horses. Uh, I've had some kind of misfortunes, it's nothing really serious. I wrecked the motorcycle in uh, 87, and that kind of put the end to my riding career. I rode some since then, but I couldn't break saddle horses anymore. I rode uh, driving horses for me. But, uh, I got pretty busted up in that. Um. You're one of my son did too, and I know a lot of people that that that, that, that drop bikes. I've dropped them twice, so I lucked out both times. Well, I did too, really. I'm still here. That's right. So did my son. He just ruined both knees. Yeah, but uh, and I got a big scar there somewhere. It sort of disappeared with age. Yeah. But uh, bikes are not God's gift to safety. It's no, it's not but for sure. I've seen people sail off horses and break their bones too. Oh yeah, it's uh, but uh, I had done a little bit of rodeo and amateur when I was a kid, and I've had a lot of bike riders you not know, tell me that I was a little leery of them bikes. 
But you ride a bull. Well, bull's got more sense than a bike does. <laughs> <laughs> they will try to run over you, but they won't just keep a pound in you until there's nothing left of you. Um, like a bike, you know, that... Uh, I had to lay it down. Somebody was coming right at me and would hit me, and I had it in my mind I'm not going to ever hit anything sitting up on this bike. Right. So I just laid her down and stuck my head through the grill through the radiator. Oh, Jesus. And my bike caught up and hit me in the heels and wrapped me around the bumper. Oh. It would be easier to tell you the things that didn't break. Oh, Jesus, yes. But I come out of it pretty good, and. Get around now, pretty well. Oh, cool. You know, it's old men's stories, one of the first things we do in our radio show, it's like, it's about living to tell the tale. Mm -hmm. Because it is about all those tales. And you, you know, I mean, you've done awesome things. You you, you ran a studio, you, you and your, your son went to Nashville and, and hit the high points in Nashville. And, Cool, and so he has, he's had, his journey, his you know, journey has been just wonderful up to this moment, and you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. Right. I mean, this time might be a low point. All those might be low points compared to the next one. Right. It's, yeah. it's, life is. It's exciting. Life is exciting, and it's an adventure, and we, and we get to participate every day. It's just awesome. I don't really claim to be a philosopher, but you know, the, I always tell people and try to remind them that, uh, you know, don't uh, be negative about what's going on. Whatever's going on, try to make the best of it, because it's temporary anyway, and then move on. Yeah. Because something better's coming. Yeah. And I don't care how good or how bad it is, something better's going to come. That's right. I agree. And that's, if you got the right attitude, I kind of feel bad for people who just go around sulking all the time because things ain't right. Well, that isn't going to help them anymore. Ah, another positive position in life, Leon. And uh, I, because Terry, Terry always says, and I say, it's like everything happens for the best. There's something up there guiding us and everything. And with that position, everything seems to happen for the best. Yes, and my dear wife, Julie, has got... Uh, a saying she comes up with all the time, and uh, sometimes I get a little tired of it, especially if I'm in a calm mood. <laughs> but uh, it's, uh, it's true. She always says, uh, you get what you think about, whether you like it or not. That's right. Exactly. And you know, there's a whole lot to that. If you're just going to dwell on what you don't have, well, you'll just keep not having it. I, yep. But if you dwell on the things you do have and how good things are, they just keep getting better, it seems to me. Wow. And maybe, you, you, write, you ever write any songs? No, I've never been. Do you ever write your son write songs? He's wrote a couple. I could, could you sing them? Uh, maybe we can get, maybe we can schedule you, you singing one of your son's songs and telling us a story about it. Um, he is, he isn't up. really much of a writer, and uh, to be honest with you, I'm not the greatest performer in the world. I'm, uh, uh, I don't know if you can use this, uh, I don't know what better term to use, but my claim to fame is a BS -er. And? And? So, and? <laughs> and? So I just... Uh, do you BS or do you just tell a good story and, 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 and emphasize high points? Well, what I call the BS is what I do. A lot. I'm a jokester, and I do a lot of kidding and a lot of. I, oh, I kind of promote love and laughter, but uh, I've uh, used to do some. Uh, I traveled with uh, Shotgun Red of, uh, of uh, Nashville playing. He's that puppet, you know. He's got shows on the. And uh, Steve Paul, that owns Shotgun Red. I traveled with him on the road and done some stand-up comedy. And uh, I play guitar, I play lead guitar, I play several different instruments, kind of. And if I had my life to live over in the music world, one thing I might have done different is to stuck to one instrument and really learn to play it, instead of playing uh, several of them, kind of. Well, maybe I'll take your lesson, because it'd just be super at one instrument. That's a good idea. And uh, 
the way uh, they like they say the way you learn to play a guitar is play a guitar. Just keep it up, keep it up. And, uh, but uh, I never did. Uh, a lot of the people around here, these uh, jammers that we have here in the valley, that I enjoy so much and have for many years, I've been coming down here. Uh, a good share of them will make a recording, and uh, some of them are pretty good, and uh, some of them are not so good. But I do not think I have a recording voice. Well, you know, I can kind of fool people if you hear me one time or wrong. But if I record this and you play it back over two, three, four times, it starts to fall apart. Well, and pretty soon you wonder, what the hell did he try to record? <laughs> I don't know. <coughs> you just got me in a, in a one I don't I don't know, and that's hard to say for me. I don't know. You, uh, maybe I don't know. Uh, I really have had some. Even when we had that, uh, of course, my son-in-law at the time was an extremely good musician, and, and uh, he kind of run that studio that we had, and he taught me about a lot about what to listen for in, in recordings and how to produce and. And, uh, and all that stuff that uh, I tried to record myself a couple times and then to me it just sounds so bad I can hear it. I'm a live performer. Hear that from a wonderful live performer. Leon, say your whole name and say Old Man Stories. Leon McGregor, Old Man Stories. Yahoo! <laughs> Old Men Stories, give me one more day to visit with old cowboys.